Here we are in San Bernardino where they had the first McDonald's. Hey. Before there was any McDonald's corporation, there were there were two brothers called the McDonald brothers, and they basically had a, a, a small uh, a stand. Well, not a stand, but a restaurant, a fast food restaurant here. Which one is it? It's a fast food restaurant, and uh, then this guy named Ray Kroc, he was selling uh, milkshake makers to places like McDonald's, and he was intrigued by by uh, how many how many customers they were able to get. And and they let you actually film, take pictures, as many pictures as you want inside. There's no cost to go in. They'll and take a donation if, if you want. Yeah. Not only that, you could donate uh, money, but they even have a better donation. Let's say you have some toy, uh, some old uh, McDonald's uh, paraphernalia, a toy, or maybe a box from the old days, or any, anything from McDonald's. You take a picture of it, and whatever you want, and they'll display you with your picture on it. So, you know today's era where everybody wants their picture everywhere you're like oh wow i can have my picture in a museum yep you can they have original bags of french fries without the french fries of course i i was expecting a little bit more stuff from the original era but they have stuff they have the blueprints and they have a few uh boxes from like the 60s or 70s but it's actually kind of cool if you could just drive by they have these uh artifacts outside like the original McDonald's sign right here, right? It's actually Without the golden arches. They actually, McDonald's did not let them keep the oh, golden know. arches. Oh, yeah, the, uh, what you see behind us, that is actually an original uh, sign. But here's the interesting thing. See that there was, it's almost like uh, the arches, but uh, apparently uh, apparently it was destroyed. While They, they were going to destroy this as well. Back then they were like, ah, let's just get rid of it. I mean, they don't own this anymore. We bought the na rights to this, so who gives a crap about uh, their old sign. They didn't really think about this as a historic uh, restaurant that spanned the whole world. It's in every, it's literally any country has a McDonald's now, except for a few. We've actually been wanting to come here for many years, but we never had a reason to come to San Bernardino till today. I, the reason why I'm wearing a suit uh, is because I'm pretending to be Rick Rock. Now one thing is there actually is no McDonald's restaurant located here. If you want the original McDonald's or at one of the originals, where is that located, Michael? Uh, there's one in Downey, it's the third McDonald's. Okay. They actually had the founder uh, movie makers come here to do some research. It, that, the one in Downey is a rare one because the, it was originally franchised by the McDonald's brothers. So Ray Kroc was not quite the first to friend those McDonald's. Apparently the brothers were, were doing so as well. Yeah. And it, what's funny is Danny actually thought this there would be some kind of restaurant here for some That's reason. What I, said. Uh, I, I did not think that. I looked at Yelp. But okay. that didn't, nobody said anything about that. All right. I'm Albert Okura. I'm the founder of One Player Restaurants. We do rotisserie chicken, and I also opened the McDonald's Museum in 1998. McDonald Brothers, are, they're in San Bernardino, and their original store is 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 gone. It's on 14th and E, and so you can tell the remnants of the original sign. This sign was 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 not completely torn down, it, and that is the original sign. And it was a music store. The building, the current building, it was a music store. The original building, there was two original buildings. They were torn down. Ray Kroc, he was selling these uh, multi-mixer shake machine uh, mixers, uh, and McDon McDonald Brothers were using uh, more multiple ones, and they were the only ones that, of uh, Ray Kroc's uh, clients that were using more than one. So he flew out, to, well, actually drove out of Route 66 to to check the restaurant out. He sat right across the street one day, 1954. He did not tell the brothers who he was. He just watched all the people coming in for lunch. And then he, he knew right away, he said, this is this what I've been searching for my whole life. So after that, he, made, he started making deals with the brothers. And then by 1961, he, he, he owned the franchising rights. In 1955, they granted him the rights to do a, a franchising in the Midwest, and Rick, Rick Rock is from the Chicago area. In 1961, he ended up uh, fighting with the brothers. He wanted to grow. He said, look, we can be all over, all over America. And by then the brothers were they're older, they were very well off, they were really the, maybe the richest two men in San Bernardino. And so they, they thought they, they, did, they did well enough and so the brothers, they fought with the Ray Kroc. So it was a bit of party and Ray Kroc had to buy them out for $2.7 million, which is a lot of money in those days. And what the brothers did, they said uh, Ray Kroc he had to borrow those, all his money because he was basically an entrepreneur, he didn't have deep pockets. And uh, he figured, okay, this location, the original location, they're making so much money that will help pay his, his loans. And the brothers said, no, you don't get this property. We're just telling you the name. 
So Ray Kroc was so mad, he vowed to never talk about the brothers the rest of his life. That's why when they opened by 1961, when they opened Los Angeles, I never heard of the McDonald brothers. And it never dawned on me there was a McDonald brothers I came to San Bernardino. And even when I, even uh, I, though I was in the fast food business all those years, nobody in the fast food business knew the history of McDonald's because they only knew Ray Kroc. Oh, yeah. And actually, if he didn't buy the company, the McDonald's would end in San Bernardino. So he made McDonald's what it is. The brothers invented the, the concept and it started right here. So, so after I read the book, I went and just continued my own business. I was doing my own restaurant and, I, and we got very uh, successful. And then in uh, 1998, I happened to read the newspaper, the local paper on a Sunday. It said a history for sale. This property was for sale and nobody wanted it. Mm -hmm. And it was in foreclosure and, and uh, they kept getting escrows and people would drop out of escrow, so the price kept going down. And one of the reasons uh, uh, no one wanted to buy the property is that San Bernardino has been a depressed area as far as real estate all these years because people that live in Los Angeles, they don't want it, there's a stigma, they don't want to say, oh, I live in San Bernardino. Even though this is the hub of uh, things in before the World War II. Mm -hmm. Because the, the, San Bernardino is the first major city into California off Route 66. And then prior to 1961, the only way, or 1971, the only way to come to California by car in the Midwest, you had to go Route 66 and you had to pass right through San Bernardino. So it had a, a tremendous location, but then uh, whatever happened, uh, it, went, it went to the downside. And, and so, People would uh, see the property advertised as original McDonald's property. They did not know the uh, true history. So they, they would get an escrow and make an offer, get an escrow, and then they would call McDonald's Corporation up and say, you know what, we have we have the original location and want to buy it. And they, and they said no, because by then, McDonald's Corporation, the headquarters were in uh, Chicago. And they didn't care about really, uh, this property. And, and since there was no internet, nobody in America knew that, that <laughs> McDonald's started here, mm -hmm. including me. Well, I knew because I read the, that book, uh -huh. you know. And then uh, what happened was in between, for the time uh, that book came out in 1986 about uh, uh, McDonald's started here, to the time I found it, saw it in the newspaper in 1998, 1992, the, the San Bernardino City Light Up, they knew the history of the town. So they bought this property, which was a music store. And what they did was they got, because they were a nonprofit organization, they got McDonald's Corporation to put that monument on that sign. So there's the historic site of the Ridge McDonald's. And then on the bottom, there's a stone monument, brass plate. said, yes, McDonald's started on this location. McDonald's started here. Mm -hmm. And they had a grand opening of Ron McDonald. They invited the original uh, Dick McDonald, the, the last surviving brother, to put the grand opening in 1992. And then they renovated the whole building, and they secured the whole property. And then by uh, 1996, I think they filed bankruptcy. Oh. And, and uh, that's why I got the property. So when, when I read the paper, the property was only 135000 And so I jumped, and the next day, uh, Monday, was, I read the thing Sunday, and Monday by Monday, I was in escrow. And uh, because I, because he, uh, you can't, it's hard to buy property for investment in San Bernardino, but, but the value was here because the, pro, the building is a 4,000 square foot building. I estimate the San Bernardino City Light, uh, light Up has spent maybe uh, 400000 to renovate everything. And get it, get it the way it is. And uh, they, I know they did all the plumbing, the electrical, and the roofing, and mm -hmm. the security, the gate, the landscaping. And uh, so they secured the property. So it was, it was really a bargain. And then 1998, uh, I closed escrow. And unfortunately for me, while I was in escrow, Dick McDonald passed away. He was the last surviving brother. And I found out that he was he was kind of a broken, broken-hearted guy when he got older because. He, he had a car that said founder of McDonald's and nobody knew who he was wow. because everyone knew Ray Kroc. Ray Kroc, he made the company. And, yeah. and here Dick, Dick McDonald, he outlasted Ray Kroc and, and, and nobody knew he was the founder. And he, he'd give cards out and said founder, nobody knew who he was. And uh, so he, but he, he passed away uh, while, while I was in escrow. Mm -hmm. and, I, and unfortunately, that was bad for me because had he lived, I would invite him to come over and he, he could give me this whole true story or uh, artifacts from him personally. And since he passed away, I had to piece everything together. And actually, when I closed escrow, it was October of 1998. And uh, then, I, then I didn't know what I was gonna do, so I said, okay, I'll, I'll put a museum here, because I put my corporate office here. And because the property was so inexpensive, I said, okay, I'll put a free museum. And, 
and so I started working on it. I didn't know anything about McDonald's, the really the the early history collectibles because you know I I, I never worked at McDonald's. I, I knew McDonald's, and even when they did the toys, by the time the McDonald's or Ray Kroc did the toys, I was already an adult, so I never bought a Happy Meal. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, but anyway, I started gathering information, and I even reached out to the local franchisees, the McDonald's franchisees, and they. Uh, they wouldn't come out. They wouldn't come out. I said, hey, I need some help. Won't you tell me, help me out with uh, some what's going on at McDonald's? Mm -hmm. And there's three of them in San Bernardino, and, and they wouldn't even come to visit me. They're afraid the corporation would get mad. So they, they, they know that the corporation would not want to be located on the residential side. Why? Right. They, well, they're afraid the corporation would get mad at them for helping me. I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if they, if, if, see, if they, if they were more of entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. they would have bought this property. They could have been the most famous franchisee in the in yeah. the in the, America, in the world. <laughs> You know, and then, uh, but anyway, what happened was, so I bought the property, I said, okay, I'll put a museum on, and I started collecting things here and there, and then all of a sudden, one of my uh, friends, you know, he was into uh, Route 66, he was helping me do things, and he said, oh, you have an anniversary coming up. I said, what are you talking about? And then, because uh, of the research we did, we found McDonald's open as McDonald's uh, Hamburgers, December December 12th, 1948. And here was in 1990, so I had a 50 year anniversary coming up. So, so what happened, I called the mayor, I said, well, we're going to have a grand opening of our museum on the 50-year anniversary of McDonald's. <laughs> and then she sent her, her lieutenant over here, and they looked, she looked at it, it was, the building was empty, and they didn't think I could do it. But I got all my, all my people that have, that have helped me, and we just put up, bought some stuff, threw some pictures on the walls, and we had a grand opening on the 50-year anniversary. And the McDonald's did not recognize that because at the time, since there wasn't really very little internet, their anniversary was 1955. That was the year Ray Kroc opened his first uh, McDonald's. So they had a different anniversary date. So, so I was getting pressed, and we put press releases out, and, and so they're you know they're covering it that way. And but the McDonald's they, they kept quiet on because you know. And then uh, and then after in the early years, we started just collecting things. People started donating things, so we just started just had a collection going. Early years, this became a Route 66 uh, traveler stop. Because Route 66 was the first major highway uh, in, in America, and, it, and it, co it, it connected the East Coast and the Midwest to California. And since the, the uh, government didn't have a lot of money, they, what they did was they connected existing highways and filled in the rest and named it Route 66. Mm -hmm. And that's why it became a famous highway. And then, so this is, this is the business loop of the Route 66 right here. So uh, in the, by the 1990s, uh, there was a revival of Route 66. The baby boomers started retiring. And they became interested, or they or they start buying hot rods like they used in Milan when they're in high school, and they buy a motorcycle, and they they want to travel the route, and then so this, and because there's no copyrights on the Route 66 uh, symbols, everybody write tour guides or, or book that's uh, touting Route 66, and and uh, we're a major stop on the route because because <coughs> everybody has a McDonald's story, so if you say there's McDonald's, and you know uh, original McDonald's on Route 66 and they'll make the stop here. Mm -hmm. And then uh, within the last five years, all of a sudden smartphones came in, social media came in. So now now we become on the top search on Google, people just passing through the county, passing through, or they come to the, the Southland and they Google, well, what's, in, what's there to see in San Bernardino? Because there isn't much in San Bernardino. <laughs> it's a really crowd, you know? And if it comes up a free, free McDonald's museum, uh, original McDonald's, there's an option, people come here. Yeah. And lately, in the last 10 years or so, we've been getting nothing but good reviews. I want to get reviews, reviews because, you know, the magic word is uh, free. So I, I don't charge nothing. So, so nobody can complain. Everyone gets more than they pay for. It. Yeah, so, uh, so we get, you know, and plus what's, what we're doing right now to separate us from other, other places of interest is I'm trying to get people's stories. So if you go, if you go inside, you'll see all these uh, people bringing toys. It could be anything. We we'll, we'll try and get the story. Especially the people that worked here uh, in the early years, in the 40s and 50s, because they're, they're getting older now, they're starting to pass away. So I want to get the personal story, and a lot of times if I see them, I want them to handwrite their story. And we kind of put that up with a picture, and if they have something to say, then it's a story behind the story. That's what we're kind of interested in, because, it, because uh, most, a lot of museums are, you know, and I'm not funded for a museum, so a lot of museums get boring and say, here's, here's the French fry machine, here's, here's the cutter, here's, Hamburger, with. it's boring, you know. Yeah. People want to see things different, and even sometimes. Uh, uh, so we try to take different people's stories, make because McDonald's built a fortune on kids and family, and so and 
And even here, when we, when we uh, people come, we're getting up to 100 people a day now because of social media. Mm -hmm. And uh, it really picked up also when that movie came out about, uh, about McDonald's called The Founder. Yeah, sure. It came out in January, and I believe had they had they premiered that movie in uh, November like they were supposed to, that Michael Keaton would have got a nomination for Best Actor. And uh, so right, the, uh, but this last uh, month or so, we had a lot of people coming in and said they saw the movie on the airlines. Because oh, wow. uh, because I think a lot of the airlines are showing the McDonald's story as, mm -hmm. as a film because it's not an R-rated movie. It's not. It's, it's mm -hmm. just a story of interest, especially overseas flights. Because uh, yeah, I just had a little lady from uh, Singapore. They, they came for a conference and an educational conference in LA, and they said 15,000 people attending. And their flight, they played the founder. They played the movie, you know. And, and uh, of course, they all know McDonald's and the, uh, you know, the, in Asia. So they they made a point to come to come out here. And then every time they come out here, they 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 ask questions. They find out well who's who's in charge, who's doing this, why is it free? And then my restaurant comes up, and we're right down the street. We're also on the Route 66. And so, so I get I'm getting publicity for what I'm doing in, in, on the restaurant because, uh, in, in the end, that's the ultimate goal. I want to do what, what Ray Kroc and McDonald's did in America. I believe it's I because I'm doing rotisserie chicken. I have the right product at the right time to be all over the world. So this is getting me attention to you know to uh, uh, before we get out these other areas. So uh, you know because mm -hmm. if I ever get to China, so oh, uh, we know that guy. He uh, he owns some McDonald's. Uh -huh. they, and he, yeah, and, yeah. Well, because well, right in these days, social media, mm -hmm. everything's changed, uh, and uh, uh, you can be, you can become famous instantly now. And so, yeah, that's amazing. and I never I never saw this coming. That's why uh, I, McDonald's is. I'm very careful what we do with McDonald's Corporation because they've been watching us. Because uh -huh. they're you know they're making sure I don't step out of bounds. I don't have the right to to say this is a official McDonald's museum or. Well, I can't make their their, their uh, logos. I so I started my own uh, restaurant company called Juan Player Chicken. Oh, yeah. In the founder of Juan Paulo's office right now, and uh, he has a collection of uh, uh, all of things uh, related to his uh, business. He even used for the first first bills that were uh, provided uh, when he started. Even has uh, just random things like a uh, fake hundred dollar bill that some customer was unfortunately able to use and get the lot free food apparently. And he has a memo for your place. Look at this more carefully. This is so fake. When I looked at it, it took me like three seconds to determine it's fake. It just has a fake look to it. Yep. It looks a little washed out and uh, Franklin just doesn't look real. Like, it just doesn't look right. Did he have the right fake on it to be able to keep it? Maybe. <laughs> and apparently, uh, so one one Paulo is uh, better to like oh, Paulo, but it's a very different uh, style of making. It. Apparently, it's like over. You know, so nice. Anyone wants to try it out? Yeah, let's try it. Two. I'm ready for it. I started this business. I took it over from the McDonald's brothers. They didn't know what they were doing, incompetent boobs. That actually was an interesting part of the story, how he was, after he took it over, he just, Ray Kroc really just made fun of the McDonald's brothers, thought they were hillbillies, and he didn't have much respect for them. He just thought that they, he was way out of their league. It's an interesting museum, it has all kinds of stuff you've never seen it. Where, where do you see this? I don't, I don't know where, where anyone would get anything like this. I guess they have, These kids' meal boxes brings back really cool memories. I remember always wanting to get the kids' meal 
just because the box looked really cool. And then they would always have a fun toy inside. But they they know how to market to kids. They would get say, hey, look, we have your favorite cartoon on, on a box, so I had to get it. Luckily, some people saved the boxes for this museum. Okay. Very good. It's very exciting here. It's a very indie kind of a museum. They talked about how new architecture is boring compared to the original brick style way of making things. This is the apparently the original kind of way of making it. I see. It's an interesting tourist attraction. Not too many people coming up here. Apparently this place advertised on KTLA, but it's probably, I don't know, I didn't win. Alright, okay, so we just met uh, the founder, Albert. I think it's, I think it's less than... Video here. Oh, okay. Okay, let's try this. It, it hasn't looked like Sanku. How is it? 